Dear students, good morning and namaste. Today, I shall be discussing on different aspects of tonsils, including their anatomy, infection of tonsils, their clinical features, and treatment options. Altine tonsils are commonly considered as tonsils by most of us. They are almond shaped, ovoid mass of lymphoid tissue, which are situated bilaterally in the lateral wall of oropharynx within the tonsil recess which is bounded by paldocrystal fold or interpillar anteriorly and the paldopharyngeal fold or the posterior pillar posteriorly. Anterior pillar is formed by paldocrystal muscle whereas posterior pillar of tonsil is made by the paldopharyngeal muscle. Tonsils belong to MALT that is mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. So they are a collection of lymphoid tissue which are important to build our immune system. You can see the picture of tonsils here. This is palatine tonsil and this is the anterior fold that is palatocrystal fold anterior pillar and this is a posterior pillar of made by palatophangeal fold. Let's discuss about the arterial supply of the tonsils. They are supplied by lingual artery through its dorsal lingual branch. You can see here there is a lingual artery and supplying tonsils by dorsal lingual branch. This is the tonsil which is a almond shaped structure here. Facial artery is the main source of blood supply to the tonsils. It supplies by its tonsillar branch. This is the tonsillar branch and the ascending palatine branch. Two branches of the facial artery supply the tonsils. Next is ascending pharyngeal artery, a branch of external cavity system. This is the ascending pharyngeal artery which supplies the tonsil and the descending palatine artery also supplies the tonsil. Therefore, tonsil is supplied by both inferiorly, through laterally and superiorly. Tonsil is a vascular structure, so blood vessels have to go to the tonsil because it's a lymphatic structure and it has to be well supplied by the blood vessels. Venous drainage Most of the venous drainage of the tonsils is carried out by paratonsillar vein, which drain to common facial vein and pharyngeal venous plexus. In turn, the venous drainage goes to the internal jugular vein. The lymphatic drainage of tonsil goes to jugular diagnostic lymph node. Tonsils are only the efferent structures they have efferent uh, limb supply. The nerve supply of tonsils is by glossopharyngeal nerve and lesser palatine nerve. What are the relations of tonsillar bed inside out? They are tonsillar capsule, peritonsillar space with the paratonsillar vein. I want to remind you that paratonsillar vein is the most common vein that bleeds during tonsillectomy. Then pharyngovascular fascia. Superior constrictor muscle, bocophangeal fascia are the third kilons. Steroid process and glossopharyngeal nerve are in close association with the tonsils in its lateral aspect. Occasionally, intracarotid artery and tonsillar artery may form aneurysms and there might be zero enlargement of tonsils. Tonsil might be medialized and there might be pulsation from the tonsils. We have to be careful when there is pulsation of tonsils, pulsatile tonsils, probably by in of the intergarter artery and transfer artery. Others are mineral pterygoid muscles and some inverse cyber gland which are more laterally and the mandible is most lateral. You can see here from the picture, they are the, this is the relation of the transfer bed. Okay, so this is the tonsil with the capsule, this is the paratonsillar vein and pharyngovascular fascia, superior constrictor muscle bocophangeal fascia and the other structures down. The facial artery is the important feeder for the tonsils as its blood supply goes through two vessels. Now let's come to differences between tonsil and the lymph node. It is very important and might be asked in the exam. Tonsils and lymph nodes are the collections of lymphatics. So tonsils are defined as sub collection of large masses of lymphoid tissue and lymph nodes are small masses of confluent lymphoid follicles found along the lymphatic vessels. Tonsils are present on the lateral wall of the oropharynx. Tonsils are partly encapsulated. The medial end of the tonsil is not encapsulated because the foreign bodies or the insult has to go toward the tonsil to get primary immunity or to get the antigen antibody reactions. The lymph nodes are fully encapsulated. I need to stress that tonsils are the first eglon things in the oral cavity or oropharynx. When the foreign body comes out into contact, that foreign body has to go through the tonsils. They are also called as policemen of the throat. The tonsils have efferent lymphatics only. The lymphatics go to the 
zero ligands to lymph nodes. The lymph nodes have both efferent as well as the efferent lymphatics. The tonsils contain crypts. Crypts are the deeper structures found in the tonsils. There is one crypta magna or the major crypt and around 15-16 minor crypts. In lymph nodes, there are no crypts. Tonsils do not contain cortex and medulla, but the lymph nodes contain cortex and the medulla. The tonsils usually enlarge till 10 years of age, then they usually stop growing. Occasionally, they decrease in size also. There is no growth of the lymph nodes. Now, let's discuss about the difference between tonsils and the adenoids. You know, adenoids also are the collection of tonsils or lymphoid follicles in the nasopharynx, and tonsils are present on the oropharynx in the lateral part of the oropharynx. They are also called as palatine tonsils. Adenoids are lined by ciliated coronal epithelium. You know, the nasopharynx is a respiratory organ. And tonsils are lined by non keratinizing squamous epithelium. Tonsil we take food through the mouth and that has to come in contact with the tonsils. Adenoids do not contain any capsule. They are free. But tonsils they are partly encapsulated. I think I have already told tonsils are medially not encapsulated. Adenoids have vertical furrows, whereas tonsils have oblique crypts. Peak growth of adenoids reaches in 5 to 6 years, whereas peak growth of tonsils reaches by 8 to 9 years. Adenoid growth stops at 12 years, whereas tonsil growth stops at 15 years. The adenoids disappear at 20 years, whereas partial duration of tonsils starts in 18 years. And now let's discuss some parts of infection of the tonsils. Tonsils can be infected by certain environmental factors, local factors, or bacteria, virus, or fungus. Let's discuss about acute bacterial tonsillitis. That is tonsillitis caused by bacteria which is present with fever, chills and rigors, throat pain, or anaphysia. The cause of organism for acute bacterial tonsillitis is group A, beta hemolytic staphylococci, is the commonest one. Other organisms like staph aureus, pneumococci aureus, and influenza also might cause tonsillitis. The types of acute bacterial tonsillitis are acute superficial or cateral tonsillitis. This mimics as a part of pleasant pharyngitis. So, there will be inflammation of pharynx and the tonsils, and they will be seen congested. The next is follicular tonsillitis, acute follicular tonsillitis. In this condition, the crypts are filled with pus. They are visible as yellow white dots. This is the most commonly found condition in tonsillitis. So, acute follicular tonsillitis is the most common condition to present in OPDs and emergencies. Acute membranous tonsillitis. In this case, the multiple follicles of follicular tonsillitis they join together to form a yellow white membrane. We have to differentiate acute membranous tonsillitis from other membrane forming conditions which shall be discussed separately. The next is acute parenchymatous tonsillitis which is infection of lymphoid parenchyma and the tonsils will be a bigger size in acute parenchymatous tonsillitis or the tonsils will be large in parenchymatous infection. This is acute cateral tonsillitis, superficial tonsillitis. Here the tonsils are red and congested and the even all of the posterior pharyngeal wall and the pharynx is congested. You can see here the follicular tonsillitis. There are certain follicles. The membranous tonsillitis, there is a membrane formation over the tonsil. And parenchymous tonsillitis, the tonsils are large and they are almost kissing together. Now let's discuss about types of chronic tonsillitis, which is uh, not commonly mentioned nowadays, chronic tonsillitis. Chronic tonsillitis might be of follicular type where the crypts are filled with pus and visible as yellow white dots discussed earlier. Chronic parenchyma tonsillitis, the infection of lymphoid parenchyma with enlarged tonsils. And chronic fibrillary tonsillitis, the tonsils shall be small tonsils with hidden pus inside, which is expressed by pressure on the anterior tonsil pillar, also called as tonsillary squeeze sign or Irwin Moore sign. In chronic fibrillary tonsillitis, if you press on the anterior pillar, pus will come from the tonsillar substances. So this signifies chronic infection going on over the tonsils. What are signs of tonsillitis? They are congested and angry looking tonsil and tonsillar pillars, especially in case of acute cateral tonsillitis. In large tonsils, except chronic fibrillary type, there will be presence of pus or slough in the crypts in acute follicular tonsillitis. If the tonsils are squeezed by tongue depressor, pressing on the anterior pinus of pillar, the pus will be expressed out in the chronic fibrillary tonsillitis. This is called as urine sign, as I had already told. So that signifies 
the patient is having chronic tonsillitis. This is one of the criteria for chronic tonsillitis. Other criteria being persistent jugular against lymphadenopathy in chronic form and congestion of the anterior pillars. So the triads of chronic tonsillitis are persistent jugular against lymphadenopathy, positive urinary sign, and congestion of the anterior pillar. How do you grade enlarged tonsils? Normally also the patient might have grade 3, grade 4 tonsils and without any infection. How do you grade the tonsils? The grading is important because it's not uncommon for children having grade 2, grade 3 tonsils without any infection. The children might have snoring at night and occasionally sleep apnea syndrome too. Grade 0 means tonsils are not visible and they are within the pillars, anterior and the posterior pillars. Grade 1, less than 25% distance between oropharyngeal space and the intertonsil pillars. Grade 2 is 25 to 49% that is tonsils fill less than 50% of the transverse oropharyngeal space. Grade 3 is 50 to 74% the tonsils fill less than 75% of the transverse oropharyngeal space. Grade 4 is 75% or more tonsils fill more than 75% distance between the here you can see the grade subtonsil enlargement this is grade 0, grade 1, grade 2 so we will measure the distance between tonsils minus anterior pillars by total distance into 100%. Suppose if this distance is 10 cm and this is 8 cm, so 10 minus 8 equals to 2 by 10 into 100% that is 20%. So this is grade 1 tonsil enlargement. So like that, we will uh, describe like that. This is grade 1 enlargement, the tonsils are just outside the tonsil pillars, just outside. The distance between the tonsils and the anterior pillar is okay. This is classified as total distance minus tonsil distance into 100%. So this will be less than 25%. So grade 2 is almost 50%. So grade 3 more than 50%, 75%, and grade 4 are the kissing tonsils. What are the complications of acute tonsillitis? The tonsils might cause local or local regional complications like recurrent tonsillitis. Once subsided, there might be recurrence of tonsils. If the recurrence is more than four times a year, then patient has to undergo surgery occasionally. The tonsil infection might go inside the tonsils, leading to intratonsillar abscesses in the parenchyma. When the infection goes slightly out towards the tonsillar capsule, the pus might collect between the tonsil and the superior muscle, leading to peritonsillar abscess or quincy. This is a very important topic in the exam. The infection can go more laterally to cause paraphyngeal space abscess, which is also a very notorious condition and which is a very dangerous condition. The infection might go more posteriorly and medially leading to retrophyngeal abscess. The infection might go to the ear through the station tube leading to otitis media. And the infection might be there in the neck nodes leading to superative cervical lymphadenitis. Systemic complications of acute tonsillitis are rheumatic fever, subacute bacterial endocarditis, acute glomerulonephritis and septicemia occasionally. Now, as I had told earlier, how to differentiate between white patch on the tonsil and tonsillitis. The most common infection that leads to white patch on the tonsil is acute membranous tonsillitis and occasionally fossil diphtheria, infectious mononucleosis, candidiasis, Vincent's angina, tonsillar neoplasm or leukemia, agranulocytosis, traumatic ulcer on the tonsil, and keratosis pharynges all might lead to the white patch on the tonsil. How to treat the tonsillitis? This is very important. All the cases of tonsillitis don't require treatment, but bacterial infection has to be treated by antibiotics. The patient has to be given adequate hydration by either oral or the intravenous fluids. Systemic antibiotics like ampicillin, erythromycin, ceftriaxone, cefuroxam, amoxiclab are to be given to control infection. The most common antibiotic being ampicillin and erythromycin. But nowadays, many organisms are resistant with the primary medicine, so you have to give on ceftriaxone or cefuroxime. Cefuroxime is a better choice. It's a second generation uh, cephalosporin, which works well with the gram-positive organism. Group A, vitamin R, stroke Antihistamines and decongestants can be given to decrease the pain and to uh, make the throat slightly decongested. Analgesics are given to decrease the pain. Antiseptics, gargle to be given to decrease the sepsis. Treatment of focus of infection like dental caries, dental ulcers, mouth ulcer, they have to be done. And occasionally we use the steroids in acute tonsillitis also. 
Steroids are strong anti-inflammatory reagents and they will reduce the inflammation when the patient is taking systemic antibiotics. Now I shall discuss very important point, tonsillolith and tonsillolith cyst. When the patient come to our clinics, they will simply uh, show us the tonsillolith or tonsillolith cyst and they will tell the doctor, I might have cancer or malignancy. So they are not malignant conditions. Both tonsillolith and the tonsillolith cyst are benign conditions. Recurrent tonsillitis or retention of the debris leads to blockage of tonsillary crypts. When the pus and debris calcify inside the crypts, they lead to tonsillolith. And yellow colored inclusion cyst leads to tonsillolith cyst. Both of them are not very uh, dangerous conditions. So you can remove tonsillolith. You may, you can, I have YouTube channel Dr. Krishna Koirala ENT and you can see there videos of removing tonsillolith. And even tonsillolith cyst can be seen in my TikTok channel Dr. Krishna Koirala. What are the clinical features of tonsillitis and tonsillitis cysts? That is, heritosis, bitter taste in mouth, white outgrowths from the tonsillitis cysts or yellow cysts in the supratonsillitis cysts. So, patients might think that they have cancers. Patient complains of halitosis most of the times and they remove their own tonsillitis debris and when they smell it, they will be very bad smelling. So, how to treat? When the patient is asymptomatic, just drainage of the cyst or manual expression of tonsillitis is adequate. Even that is not necessary, but when the patient wants, then you can simply clear it. But when the patient is present with severe symptoms, then tonsillectomy is to be carried out. Now, what is keratosis pharyngis? Again, the next condition which is more commonly confused with tonsillitis is keratosis pharyngis. It is defined as benign, self-limiting condition with the presence of yellowish horn-like outgrowth from the mucous of tonsils that cannot be wiped off. That cannot be wiped off. It is caused by smoking, alcohol, or vitamin deficiency. On histopathology, you can see hypertrophy and hyperkeratinization of the epithelium with the absence of inflammation. So they are just seen in the tonsil. Patients will come with the presence of horn-like outgrowth. Sometimes they can be big horn-like also. Most of the time, sclerosis doesn't require any treatment, but patient has to be reassured and tonsillectomy in severe cases can be performed when the patient is having problem. You can see here the keratosis pharyngis. Then the last and very important topic in tonsillitis is DD of unilateral tonsillary enlargement which might be asked in the exam both in practicals and theory. Intratonsillar causes of unilateral enlargement are tonsillar malignancy that is development of cancer in the tonsil, peritonsillar abscess, inflammation of tonsils and its bed, peritonsillar space, intratonsillar abscesses already told, tonsil with stone in the tonsil, tonsillary cyst and tonsillar artery aneurysm occasionally. I had told in the first second slide tonsillar artery aneurysm and Vincent's angina. They all present with unilateral tonsillary enlargement. The extra tonsillar causes are parapharyngeal abscess, parapharyngeal tumors, tumors of deep lobe of the parotid gland, internal carotid artery aneurysm and subaglium hernopathy. So occasionally when unilateral tonsillar enlargement is there, with extra tonsillar causes, patient has to be sent for CT scan or ultrasound. With this, we will finish the topic on tonsils. Thank you very much for hearing till now and watching till now. Thank you. Have a good day.